brothers just on the inside yeah. where we come in front. Yeah. And it's incredible. It makes a massive difference. It's the, the biggest difference you well, can you possibly would, make. You put like kind of um, what do you call it like almost like plasterboard. But yeah, it's plasterboard. You, you get it. It's it's you lose. It's your insulated room plasterboard. Yeah, yeah. Your room will get smaller by a, at least eight inches. Yeah. And you get very tricky issues around this kind of point because your wall's going to come out like that. Yeah, you've got to so it. you've got to redo all of your jointing with your woodwork. But it's incredible because you, it's just, well, where I come from, it's minus, you know, like yeah. 15 in the winter and, minus, yeah. and plus 35 in the summer. And it works very well on, on, on both. The, on both, and the house is dry and soundproof as well. Yeah, it's yeah, incredible. Yeah. It's very, very good. There's a, there is a house in Camden, uh, you know, when they do this open house scheme. Yeah. Um, I'd recommend going to uh, the kind of eco house in Camden, because what they've done is they've managed to reduce um, emissions by 90%. Wow. So compared to the, this kind of house, they, they only use 10% of the energy that they used to use. So basically to, what you invest in it, you recommend? Yeah, you it's, a, it's a below yeah. zero cost investment. Yeah. Because does, that, you, does that make such a difference on a terrace house? Got it does make a difference on a terrace house, oh, yes. I mean, it's, it's your neighbor, so. Yeah, well, of course, uh, the, most of those, the, the 35 end is um, if you're an end of terrace or if you're detached. It's going to go down to 20, 25% if you're a terraced house because you're, you're cutting the amount of surfaces it can escape from in half, and a lot of those are windows anyway. George Monbiot wrote an article about it because he did it to his house, yeah. but I think in the end he just thought it wasn't worth the candle. Yeah, uh, yeah, it wasn't worth it, and well, also he lost a lot of space in his house. Yeah. but I, I imagine one can find it. All of these are, are, are kind of balances between aesthetic decisions, the comfort of living, and what you want to be doing A for the planet, B for your energy bills. So you, those are those are personal choices. You know, you, we should, we've just done a sort of um, homemade do-it-yourself <coughs> secondary glazing. Is that the, the hairdryer one? No, just within within the sash windows. And I can't tell you yeah. the difference it's made. It's yeah. huge. Yeah, difference. we've got this whole house. Huge we've got double glazing in the wood. In the old, so it looks all yeah, we've got double glazing. glazing in the wood. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. the, is this one you haven't done? Yeah, yeah. So how yeah. much would it be? For, because we don't know if it's been mm -hmm. done before, but only at the front of the house. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. For let me count them out. I don't know what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven windows is eight thousand pounds. So I've planned a window. So yeah. Now, if you're very lucky, um, the double bays at the front are broad enough that this bit here can accommodate double glazing. I think it has to be more than forty. It's got to be at least forty-five, fifty mil wide. Because if it's narrower than that, if it's like 40 mil wide, this, this section there, you can't put a double glazing panel in it. So, in our house, these windows, which are broad enough, they're just going to take this off and replace this part, the, the actual sash. In a, in a window that's too narrow, a whole lot has to come out, a new frame has to go in, new sashes have to go in. And that's all to do with the thickness. Can you not put it on the outside of the top window? Because one slides up on the other and it would clash with the other. Um, the I'm not talking about magnet glaze now, I'm talking about integral double glazed windows. So the double glazed bit goes where the glass is. Yeah, I just went on the outside rather than the inside. On the outside of the upper window? Yeah. Um, As you were saying, because they, cla they would clash with them, wouldn't they? And they slide. I'm not sure it's I understand not the question, glazing. but it's not secondary. It's not sec I'm not talking if secondary glazing. Yes, you could put the you could put it on the outside yeah. possibly, but the mm. magna glaze option, I believe, and you can confirm this or not, it just comes here. Yes. Yeah, no, I understand so it, that. Yeah, yeah. So that so secondary glazing, you're not dealing with individual windows. If you're having a unit put in mm. that slides up and down. Then, then this issue about how thick it is. <coughs> Sometimes you see up. they take the whole frame out, and the whole thing has to be reconstructed. Okay. I mean, you may be right. I'm not sure yeah. that I understand exactly what you're talking about, but that devil's in the detail on that one. It's but how you thick. You still but... have the problem of the draft with a yes. with a sash window. Yeah. Even if you. Yes. If this is double made, made yeah. you still have the issue about the air coming yeah. in yeah. here. Yeah. Now, if you're having double glazing done. There's a product that you can get now, which is this bead 
comes with a brush on it. Yeah. Mm. So you replace the sorry, not that. You replace this bead with the one that has a brush. Now that's another. That's a, a, a slightly more involved version of this solution. It doesn't deal with the upper one because it's just here. Yeah, that's where the main draft comes, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. If you if your upper one is is drafty, and here too, then then the brush bead won't <coughs> deal with all of it. What I've done in my house with this with this system is to do the lower windows because that's the bit that I feel because mm. it's at my height and across here um, in the summer I, I put a sock it's a kind of like the old-fashioned thing that you put at the bottom of the front door yeah. it's a tube of fabric that you like stuffed with rags propped there you mean in the winter I presume? in the winter you're right, yes oh, yeah. I do <laughs> <laughs> yeah. David um, Dumb question, but actually in our house over the years, mm -hmm. redecorating a lot of the windows have actually been painted in and if none you, of them yeah, that, don't that's, move. That's the super so, cheap way of doing it. Yeah, silly corner. Yeah. 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 The draft, the, all of the draft busting solutions are aimed at windows that you want to open and do open, mm -hmm. and they're designed to accommodate opening to allow you to open and shut them. Mm -hmm. This is, I mean, obviously that solution doesn't work for a front door. You can't paint your front door shut unless you're gonna never go out. Um, so those uh, roof, windows, door, floor, and walls, that, those are the places that heat is going to escape from in your home. Sorry, can I just ask a really basic yeah, question? Please. About how you? What's the difference between double glazing and secondary glazing? The difference between double glazing and secondary glazing is that this double glazing is when you replace the glass in the window itself Just with, two that... with double glazing. That, okay. And uh, somebody was talking about, um, you were saying that you've done it inside this area. Yeah. Is that right? So just the, secondary glazing. Se that's secondary glazing in this area. Double glazing will have a vacuum panel. Right. The, the thing about secondary glazing, generally, if, if we, you know, for instance, if this was routed out now, that section, and a piece of glass was just parked in here, what would that count as? That would be secondary glazing, because unless it's vacuum packed, you'll get condensation okay, so the in the interior the period. Yeah, the double glazing is, is like a unit, it's a yeah. factory created They put argon gas in mm. some of them as well. Yeah, but they, oh, okay. so they'll, they'll put an insulating, the, 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 what's so in the middle, in either nothing, or a particular gas will serve the function of acting as an extra insulating feature. Right. Secondary glazing is where you just trap some air in there, so it's working like a wetsuit. And do you and get condensation you, with secondary you glazing? You can do, it depends how tight it is. Right. But the thing about secondary glazing is you tend to take it off in the summer. Right. So those issues tend to go away when you take it off. Yeah. How effective is that self-adhesive cheap alternative to frosted windows and you stick it on the glass is that going to prevent any uh, I don't think that does enough? any heat I mean that mm. no it'll make almost zero difference really? that's just a visual thing so yeah. that people can't see in for now sure I, I've done the hairdryer option the hairdryer option is the other kind of mm. DIY shop cheap version where you put some sticky tape around the sides you buy this big long roll they sell them in home stores and DIY shops and you stick it on, roll it down, stick it here, and then hair drying it will tense it up so the wrinkles that are there um, disappear. So, but that's... Can that's, you see through it? You, you can yeah, see yeah, straight yeah. through it. It's yeah, like cling plastic. film. It's cling film, it's basically. Cling film. Yeah. basically. You're cling filming your mm. whole window to make it completely... And you take it off in the summer. And in the summer. You take it off in the summer. Yeah. Yeah. Is that effective? It is very effective. It is effective, effective. Yeah. 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 Can we use it? No, you have to start No, but it costs you 10 pounds. Cheap, okay. And you can buy it. And then how, what right. do you put down so you don't get marks when you take it off in terms of the tape? Or well, you that's, get, you're yes, stuck with that. You are stuck with the sort of mm. leftover Sticky tape. marks. They're repainted every year. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so yeah. that makes it a bit more expensive than the £10. Yeah. Pounds. Or, you, or you get some Evo stick uh, adhesive remover and just spend yeah. Yeah. a morning rubbing it all off again. It's tiresome, but it, it works it's in the very winter. Quick. And if you have very, very leaky mm. windows, and you want to do the whole thing. Lots of people do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's it called? Stormguard. 
I would just say, yeah, 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 we, we use a lot of power in the summer, you know, with a ceiling fan and fans in, so the secondary glazing has been just as good in the summer as winter. <coughs> it's been, it's been really it good. We don't, we don't use the ceiling fan, we don't need to. It's just, right. It stays really nice and cool. It's a bit like the um, point about the walls. Insulating yeah. works both ways. Now, insulating works when it's too hot. Insulating yeah. works when it's too cold. And the noise from the street as well, and it stops the noise when people go out and stand on the street. You know, yeah. I mean, that's another. That, that's a kind of fringe benefit of, of any secondary yeah. glazing or double glazing, yeah. is that it summer, cuts the noise down. It's definitely yeah. a real bonus in the summer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, those are the kind of those are the direct heat loss through the building issues. Um, a couple of just kind of quick romp through things that you can do to save energy anyway in the winter um, you can if you interesting statistic if you turn your thermostat so that your the temperature in your home goes down from 20 degrees to 17 degrees you use 30 percent less energy from 20 20 to 17 but then you're cold. Well, yeah. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't find seventeen cold. There's a, there's a you know. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So there's there's hardy. There's jumpers. There's all sorts of options here. I mean, I have some very good friends. That's what I was told by LSC. Yeah. The other thing that you can do is if you have a heating system that has a hot water tank. Yeah. You can notch that down five degrees. Most of us yeah. will go and run a bath and put cold water yeah. in it to yeah. make it the right yeah. temperature. That's yeah. mad. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. no yeah. reason for that at all. Yeah. Your tank should be at the temperature that you want your hottest water, your yeah. bath. It's true. Yeah. You know, don't make it any hotter than that. It's just wasted energy. What have you got a combi boiler? Well, um, a combi boiler comes straight off the boiler to the... You can adjust the, you can adjust the yeah. combi boiler. Is it maximum? Is it not? I'm, I, it depends on the combi boiler. Um, but you can adjust whether it's running at maximum or not. Um, I've got questions. Please. You know, you know the thermostat, if I put below 17, you won't come out the heating. Well, that means that your, your house is at 17. The boilers is an interesting issue. We again recently replaced our boiler. We went from a kind of one that was 25 years old to an A rated boiler. Um, what we noticed immediately is that for, I, I mean, I haven't had the gas figures in yet, but the um, Valent, for example, uh, advertised that in the course of a year you can save about £250 on your gas bill. Now, uh, labour, VAT and new boiler will cost about um, £2,000 to put in. So, £250 um, is 12.5% return. You know, if you've got £2,000 sitting in the bank earning you 0.5%, <laughs> you can put it in a... Admittedly, it's spent and you can't take it out again, but your return <laughs> on that money is quite big. You know, it makes a significant saving in, in your gas usage. Um, you were talking about floorboard or, or with the, look, you know, losing the temperature by the floor. Yeah. Um, we just had... Um, you know how the floorboards are quite gappy sometimes. Yeah. We had them changed, like you know, mm -hmm. done properly where with a, with a wedge. Through, you know, yeah. no, no, no. Like someone came. Oh, we just scooted them all up. Yeah, yeah. Well, well not this, but the same way. Yeah. And he makes already quite a. Okay. Yeah. No, Obviously, yeah, still, no. it's still cold because you don't have carpet, but at least you don't have the draft. Yeah, before no, you could actually feed it. I mean, if you, you know, it's a. Again, we have wood floors at our home, they're tongue and groove, so we don't, they're not drafted for us. Mm. But, you, you know, carpet's a good insulator on the floor. It's, this is doing a fantastic job here in Elaine's house. Mm. Yeah. Um, basic things, turn the heating off when you're not using it. Um, thermostatic valves on individual radiators will cut the, the hot water going to that room off when it's not needed. You know, there's two theories. Um, and I've asked my plumber actually, he was here this okay. week. One who says, leave the thermostat on at 16 all the time if you're not here, or the other one is, heat your house 
house up when you when it in. Which one do you, would you agree with? Well, what I do, yeah. um, because I, I'm not up to speed on the theory, is that I'm from Elaine's school of thought, which is my house is a bit cold, I put on a woolly, yeah. um, I don't heat up space that I'm not in. Yeah. Nick has done a study of this, yeah. so that he has thermostatic control valves on his um, radiators, and the figures are actually very promising. Yes, if I just do the supply. Other things that you can do. Um, Use the cool cycle on the washing machine. Um, don't have a dryer. Hang your clothes up. These are very kind of basic thoughts. Um, drive less, fly less. These are, you know, they're just kind of no-brainers, really. <laughs> the last couple of items about home conservation of energy. Um, if you have a chimney um, and it's a fireplace and it's open, that just sucks your hot air up. You can, the, you can buy a chimney balloon. That's right. something, or you can, um, if you don't, this is if you don't use the fireplace, or just get a load of bubble wrap and stuff it up. But if you do this, you should cap your chimney. Right. If not, you're because you'll, your wall. you'll get rain, because, rain yeah. on the top of it. Yeah. 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 Indeed. Mm. What's a chimney balloon? A chimney balloon is something that you can buy in a hardware store, but it's basically something that you, you pump up oh. to fill the space, and it expands to fill the space, but bubble wrap's right. just as good. But yeah, when you should close the chimney, make sure you've got a hat, because you know, like now when it rains, it rains in the chimney, and if you've got air, it dries it out. If you put a balloon, the chimney is going to get wet, the chimney breast is going to mm. water mm. yeah. the wall, mm. so you should have your chimney with a little hat on the top. And the other very basic thing that you should be thinking about is if you have curtains, put thermal liners in them. Because double glazing, you know, you can do the same job with a thermal liner in a curtain. It's only half the day that you have your curtain shut, but most of us are home in the evenings. That's a time. And it's uh, the other place is to put a curtain behind the front door. I mean, everybody used to have it in the old days. We don't now. We tend not to.